Welcome, everyone, to a special edition of Superhero Stuff You Should Know. It is I, the Ben Knight, over here with... The Andrew Gotham Needs, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> and... Mm, constipation. <laughs> and... The Zach Gotham Deserves, but not the one it needs right now. Yes. <laughs> whatever that means. <laughs> we could, yeah, whatever that means. We could not fit that into your title, but <laughs> does it mean we are covering something that is a very hot topic? It seems in the past couple of years, we want to do an episode because of this growing trend criticizing the character of Bruce Wayne or Batman, saying that. And I'm pulling it up right now. Here's the headline from Screen Rant saying, "Quote: Bruce Wayne's money would help Gotham more than Batman ever will." Lame. Why doesn't Batman give away his billions to help the world instead of using it on tanks and punching bad guys in an armored bat suit? Lame. Hmm. <laughs> we would not have a comic then, would we? Yeah. Yeah, so automatic response is what Zach said, where it's like, Batman is a fictional character. As much as it seems that I'm like, okay, like I'm the man who knows too much about Batman, I got this whole we got this whole show, we talk about this all the time. He's still a work of fiction, everybody. And the character of Batman yeah. doesn't work. It would be extremely boring if he doesn't actually put on a Batman outfit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's stupid. It's, it's adults adults trying to dictate too much a children's, uh, well, it should be for children's property. Right, right. You know? Yeah. Mm. All right, well, that's our show. Thanks a that's lot, That's the episode, everybody. So, Thanks for tuning that in. That is superhero stuff you should know. Until <laughs> next time. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, this is, we get this criticism over and over and over again, so... Let's keep. Let's take a look at another one. <laughs> Bruce Wayne could reduce crime more as a philanthropic philanthropic billionaire than as Batman. This person says, "Why doesn't Batman just use his money to fix Gotham?" All that doesn't stop someone from seeing Batman as an elite who just wants to punch down. What do you think? Uh, this person says, "If he put the amount of money, time, dedication, and perseverance that he does into beating people to a pulp, he could probably cure cancer, AIDS, and solve world hunger. There are a <laughs> oh lot of God. other things he could do." This person says, imagine how much more good Bruce Wayne could do for Gotham if he spent some of that money on therapy and anger management and then donated to help the city instead of waste billions on fancy gadgets so he can fist fight people at night. <sighs> Dude, okay, all right. It's almost as if people think this is an original idea whenever they say this. As if no <laughs> yeah. one else ever thought about this before. They're just like, oh man, you know what? I got my hot take for uh, Reddit or for Twitter and shit. So You know what would well, make why a did comic <laughs> financial shit? <laughs> Just if fucking that's... doing fucking accounting shit for 23 pages. <laughs> if this is going to be the argument for Batman, you could say the exact same thing for Iron Man. You could say, yeah, and yet Iron Man doesn't really get this treatment. And you could right. say that for any of the rich billionaire superheroes, because there's a bunch of them too, we still got, I mean, we still got the shadow is from the 30s, so I get that it's not as big of a thing, but it's yeah. still like a rich dude in the time of the Depression. So, <laughs> you know, it's... It still extends, but it is with Batman specifically, and even comic book professionals or comic book writers have been saying this. So we got Jimmy uh, Jimmy Palmiotti here in this other slide here saying uh, he can be more of a hero as Bruce Wayne using his money to help others than wearing that costume and arresting the same six bad guys over and over and over and over and over, dot, dot, dot. It's funny how the language is usually the same, too, as you've seen, yeah. uh, even though it's different people. So Jimmy Palmiotti worked on the Harley Quinn comics. Even famous comic writer Garth Ennis uh, is working on a comic storyline called Batman Reptilian and uh, calls him, <laughs> quote, a billionaire aristocrat who beats up poor people. Now, is he stirring the pot there? Because it seems like if he's a comic writer, why would he say yeah. shit like that? And there are certain things in that comic that I've I've read about. I haven't read the comic, but I've read articles about it that sort of he obviously injects that criticism into the story. I read the first issue. What do you think? It was interesting. I just I was interested because it seemed like it was going to focus on Killer Croc, which. Mm -hmm. I think it will eventually, or there's some other creature going on. But uh, it, yeah, I, I talked about this before. It's kind of the artwork. It's hard for me to get into it completely because of the artwork. I feel like mm -hmm. it's a little too abstract and kind of like messy for me to like fully get into the story. So I hear you. that's my only criticism for it. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, uh, I was kind of intrigued by a storyline that seemed like it was going to focus on Killer Croc. I was like, oh, this is yeah. this is kind of new. Andrew. Beats up poor people. It's hilarious. Okay. It is hilarious. Are they really poor? Yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah. When, okay, I get it. You know, poverty does lead to people to be desperate to turn to crime, but how often do we see Batman actually 
breaking the arm of somebody who is just trying to feed their family, as opposed to somebody who is like Mr. Zaz and wants to kill an innocent woman in an alley, you know? He, how often are we seeing Batman actually beating up an innocent person? How often are we seeing him be brutal to somebody yeah. who we know is has forced to turn to crime due to desperation? Even our guest Rob Ailing had that whole fan film, check it out, Living in Crime Alley, where Batman tracks down the thief back home only to find that he's doing it for his daughter and all that, and he does not bring him in. He doesn't break his arm in front of the kid. He doesn't mm -hmm. beat him to a pulp in front of all that type of stuff because... Batman, lo and behold, I know this is a newsflash for certain people, but he has compassion. <laughs> I don't believe that. So, <laughs> I think we've made our opinions pretty clear on this, but do you guys have any other things to add to this before we dive really deep into this, starting with the Zack that Gotham needs? <laughs> I just feel like the current comics sometimes do get around this and the fact that they're saying like Bruce Wayne does do all these things like he does a lot of philanthropic uh, activities that are behind the scenes. Um, and I, uh, again, about the humanity aspect, I think it's a much easier to see in the animated series and even the new adventures of uh, Batman that there is a lot of humanity to the character and he is sometimes trying to follow up with certain villains to make sure that they become completely reformed. I think about the... Um, what is that double talk episode from the new adventures where, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the ventriloquist tries to reform and Batman, like as Bruce Wayne, like gets him a job at one of his, you know, companies, even if yeah. it's just a male person and making sure that he has kind of like a, a place to live, like a small apartment. Like why would a man that a lot of these, like, I guess, uh, critiques cast Batman in this really, snarky light like why would a man that is just like i hate poor people and i like dressing up in a costume go out and just mm -hmm. punch everybody why would that guy care anything about a you know stupid person like the ventriloquist if they're just so such a poor you know mm -hmm. little like man i think that they kind of it depends on who's writing batman really but mm -hmm. a lot of people forget about that so maybe a lot of it goes on behind the scenes and again mm -hmm. There wouldn't be a Batman comic book, movie, cartoon, character, anything like that if you're just going to say that he can do more as Bruce Wayne than as Batman, even if it may be the truth. Andrew. It, yeah, it's just people are too old now. <laughs> people trying to <laughs> people like just looking at it through such an adult lens. This is mostly for kids. Yes, lots of adults like it, but it has a basis in being comics that kids buy, you know, and it's just not, it wouldn't be, it's not fun. It's not mm -hmm. a fantasy. It is a fantasy. Okay. It's the guy, guys like the penguin and his fucking jaws exposed. Somebody could shoot him in a fucking sniper his fucking jaw off. Uh, you know, it's the one the, area Deadshot does not aim for, I guess. In the in the real <laughs> world, that's what would happen immediately. You, it's a, sus a suspension of disbelief, right? Mm -hmm. So, um, I don't know why this is. Pr adults have this problem more than kids, right? Where they just can't, they just can't see it because it's too fake, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, and <clears throat> another thing is like, don't you think when he was made in the '30s that being rich was definitely a part of the fantasy? Yeah, like it's mm -hmm. not just the Batman part. The Bruce Wayne being rich, fo following a rich person, wasn't something that was annoying like a lot of people think it is now. It was probably, I'm just guessing, but it was probably part and parcel to the whole fantasy of what we're watching and the whole you know debonair vibe, dapper kind of high class American kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's part of the fantasy. So again. It all goes back to fantasy. On top mm -hmm. of that, beating up poor people, uh, it's like, <clears throat> maybe the henchmen are poor, dude. Like, maybe we can say that. Mm -hmm. But, like, the Penguin's rich. Two-Face is probably rich. Joker's an insane person. I don't know. He doesn't deal with money, I guess. So, Riddler, I could see being rich, too. Like, being able to fucking, I don't know, do something with stocks or cryptocurrency these days. Who knows what the fuck. Mm -hmm. But um, or cheating people out of their money or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but the other thing is like, how does he fight then? Right? You have you could just beat somebody to a bloody pulp, and maybe Frank Miller and shit's done that. And that's what looks like it's going to happen in the Matt Reeves Batman, mm -hmm. you know. But they're going to address that probably. Who knows? We haven't seen the movie yet. But 
Like I had this um, fan script you read years ago, Ben. It was like three pages, like a Batman thing, and it was a hench. It was from a henchman's perspective, and talking to another like crime boss or whatever. And he was basically talking about it's. And he starts talking. It goes into flashbacks, and every time Batman's fighting, he the henchman kind of notices like he could have snapped his neck there, but he didn't. He could have done this there, but he didn't. He could have he could have killed all of us, yeah. but he doesn't. It subdues, and that's part of the fantasy. Sure, nobody in real life can really. I mean, maybe some martial arts master we don't know about. I don't know, but like nobody can really handle martial arts that well. But again, that's just part of the fantasy that mm-hmm. even in a fight with like twenty fucking dudes, literally, he's able to. Not to end the fight in, um, I mean, I guess it's violent, but in a non-lethal way. You know, you you want to s- stop the violence as quick as possible. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and that doesn't end in killing, because he has the no-kill rule. It ends in subduing. Mm-hmm. Maybe he'll knock people out, and again... In the real world, if you get if you knock somebody out, you might have some fucking permanent damage. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you might as well be dead. Comic book logic is just they're just they're gonna sleep for a while, okay? Mm-hmm. It's just not that big of a deal. Again, it's a guy in a bat suit with his fucking chin hanging out. Fucking let it go. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm done now. Thank you. I think that's a good summary of <laughs> why from like the fantasy perspective, right? Of, yeah. Like, yeah. It's a fantasy, it's a fantasy. <laughs> Part of that fantasy is that this rich billionaire is out to help people. That's part of the fantasy, and people yeah. don't really want to believe that. And I think a lot of it is demonstrating, if we take it beyond the fantasy as- aspect, we're just like, sure, it's a work of fiction, but let's say you still feel this about it. I yeah. still think it's a severe lack of understanding of the character and the world that it's set up. I think it's the ultimate basic bitch idea that Batman is just a dude <laughs> who uses his money for gadgets and to beat people up because I can see it, you know? It's shallow. If your main knowledge of Batman is that you watch the Dark Knight trilogy a few times and you think, oh, now I know Batman and all there is to be, <laughs> then I can see you come away with the idea that Batman is just angry because of his <laughs> voice and that he uses his money through Morgan Freeman to get a bunch of gadgets. And you're like, okay, well, that's who he is. Again, if that's your basic bitch idea of Batman, I understand that. It's not even true for the Dark Knight trilogy, even though I understand how it gives that perspective. But I can see how you got that. But the problem is this argument hinges on two things that we're going to dive into. One, the idea that Bruce Wayne doesn't spend any money to help poor people, which we're going to dive into in terms of whether or not that's actually true. And number two, it implies that Gotham's crime issues, all of its crime issues, all of its supervillains can be solved by throwing Bruce Wayne's money at it, which we're also going to dive into. We're Ooh. going to basically have two parts in this. In uh, As we ask this question, does Bruce Wayne, I mean, does Gotham need Bruce Wayne or Batman with this great thumbnail that... Zach provided with the Michael Keaton Batman unmasked. <gasps> so I think that was yeah. a great choice. Everyone knows uh, the secret. This one. <laughs> Spoilers. <laughs> <up> like Batman. <laughs> well, um, but I think it's it's an overly simplistic view to just be like, oh, like Bruce Wayne's money will solve everything. And I think we should spend this episode to talk about would it? So the first half of this, we're going to go into, okay, what does Bruce Wayne actually do for the city? For one's going to talk for a good chunk of this on Bruce Wayne, not about Batman. And the second half, I want to dive into, okay, let's say that Bruce Wayne was only a philanthropic billionaire, but Edward Nygma was still around, Harvey Dent's still around, and all that type of stuff. Would his money be enough to prevent them from turning evil? And we will go character by character on that, into that discussion. So, But as I said, first off, the first half is going to be on... What does Bruce Wayne do with his money? So let's go back into some of the criticisms that's been going on in here. We had uh, this long-ass one about (laughs) how uh, Bruce Wayne can improve social infrastructure with his wealth and technology. Uh, We got this other one here that we're looking at. This looks like it's from Korra. Why doesn't Batman just use his wealth to provide welfare, create jobs, build schools to make Gotham City a better place to live and create less incentive for people to turn I think Wayne Enterprises before. provides quite enough jobs. Well, oh, yeah. we'll see and about that. They even, say, <laughs> they even say in the Dark Knight trilogy that, well, his funds mm-hmm. were running out because he was a burnout, but yeah. there were funds going to the goddamn, mm-hmm. what you call it, um, orphanage yeah. mm-hmm. and, and other places, too. It's, they made it seem like mm-hmm. so. Mm-hmm. 
So uh, this one <laughs> says that Bruce Wayne could dedicate his massive fortune to eradicating poverty instead of becoming Batman. This person, uh, also on Reddit, says that he can use it for education initiatives uh, on here. And this person <laughs> says, uh, you know, truly stop, stop crime is to get to the root cause, which in most cases is poverty and lack of education, blah, blah, blah. Like, this is all the same stuff. All right. So <laughs> did you have to hate read all of this for the research well, for this? Uh, Dan, our, our research assistant, Dan, basically, <laughs> I told him, like, find what you can of this. And he's like, here are these 12 that I just found in the last minute. I'm like, all right, well. I wonder man. if some of these arguments came about after the release of the White Knight storyline where Joker is the good guy. Because a lot of the arguments exist within that narrative for that mm-hmm. universe of Batman. Because Jack Napier does what? Batman has not mm-hmm. as far as like, you know, at least on the surface, it seems like he's doing right by Gotham and helping right. the poor and everything. But it's, mm-hmm. you know, I won't spoil it for anybody. There, There is a lot of other stuff going on in it that maybe is not so black and white. Right. Well, in this specific case, this was written. This comment on Reddit was from six years ago. So I feel okay. like it's probably not oh, wow. by White Knight. <laughs> so this has been probably not. Um, no. This has been in the zeitgeist for a while. It seems. It seems even more prevalent now. But it seems like it's been kind of a thing. So let's see how these arguments hold up to evidence. Starting with what exactly does Bruce Wayne do with his money? And I think. For a while there in the comics, it was just like, oh, he's just a rich guy with a house. And then we got to the 60s, and we get to this weird period of time where they needed to spice things up. So they said, hey, let's kill off Alfred. So they killed Alfred, and Bruce Wayne, in memory of Alfred, in 1964, decides to set up, quote, the Alfred Foundation, as Mm. it says here. Bruce Wayne, head of the Alfred Foundation, in this uh, panel from an old comic, uh, comic over here. And later, of course, we would, Alfred would get resurrected. He would turn out to be alive. And so it doesn't make sense to call it the Alfred Foundation anymore. So let's call it the Wayne Foundation. And that's how the Wayne Foundation was started. It was because it was originally for Alfred, and then it became its own thing. So what exactly does the Wayne Foundation do? Well, as it says in this comic panel, as Bruce is talking to Poison Ivy, uh, the Wayne Foundation spends millions on charity. He gives a lot of uh, his money to different charities, uh, regularly throws his money around to different organizations and events. This is another panel from uh, the (laughs) Batman the Animated Series comic where he, at the last minute, comes in and donates $2 million and basically upstages the penguin who's trying to be his own, <laughs> you know, mock philanthropist here. $2 million. <laughs> <laughs> uh, In this next slide, he donates a bunch of money to Gotham Academy, Gotham Museums, Gotham Hospitals, the GCPD, homeless funds. Uh, this is from the uh, 196, Batman 66 comic where he donates uh, close to $5,000 to charity. Uh, it's we have... starting to seem as if these people that made these disparities comments haven't read the comics yes no Maybe not even seen the movies because as we have here <laughs> in batman forever the whole reason why he goes to the circus and sees 45 year old dick grayson <laughs> perform is because it's a charity circus he was there to get his cents from silver dude at the charity <laughs> auction <man. laughs> uh and we also Prune see him juice. contribute to the well-being of gotham in this and this panel it says that he gave a grant for gotham weather and traffic reports on there it also has him uh, spend fourteen hundred dollars to feed the poor and elderly and he personally shows up to make sure that they're fed in here he also helps fund environmental causes so he opens an outdoor atrium in order to help gotham be quote the cleanest greenest city in the world i could see wayne enterprises getting into the green green energy and shit Yeah. yeah He acquires lands for a nature preserve. He gets heavily involved in some science causes. He helps fund fund research and development for space colonies. Uh, In Batman and Robin, we know that he donated the world's most advanced telescope to Gotham Observatory, which Mr. Freeze tries to use to freeze everybody, but Mm -hmm. Bruce couldn't have known he was going to do that. Um, (laughs) Gives donations to the Museum of National History. Uh, Also contributes a lot to health care. So Dr. Leslie Tompkins is one of his uh, fam- good family friends, and as he tells her in this one comic from the 80s, uh, he helps fund her clinic as well as many other clinics and social programs, uh, also funds the free clinic that Leslie works with with uh, Dr. Chandra Consolving, who is Bruce's girlfriend during the Nightfall storyline, uh, has his own wing for the children uh, at a hospital, gives toys and has his company employees spend time with sick children on Christmas, uh, funds clinics that the government stopped funding, and even 
uh, helps fund the life-saving transplant operation that saves the life of Nora Freeze, Victor Freeze's wife, in Sub Zero. So, this I wish you would have done that a little earlier. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Could have prevented a lot. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's true. That that's would be a lack of knowledge, not of not because of that's lack of in wanting. yeah within that universe. That's right. They thought he yeah. she was dead still. Mm-hmm. That could be a yeah, it's a non-violent uh, conclusion, a third act for Mister Freeze there. Like yeah. he may he, instead of punching Mister Freeze in the in the dome, his fucking aquarium head, uh, <laughs> his glass head. You 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 uh, uh, what do you call it? Fix the cause of him being Mister Freeze by healing Nora or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's cool. Yeah, I like that too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that was the that was the ending to Sub Zero. Now. If you're like Garth Ennis, who apparently has written this into the Reptilian storyline, you might be like, okay, so Bruce is a philanthropist, he does all this, but how much of this is really just to put on the axe so no one suspects that he's Batman? You know, how much of this is just to, to prop up the Wayne Legacy name? What about actually using the money to help prevent crimes? And my response is, you mean like the <laughs> anti-crime center that Adam West Bruce Wayne sets up in the 1960s show? <laughs> In the first episode ever of the 66 show, the pilot, the very first time you ever see Adam West in the entire series, he's setting up, he's in this meeting, as we see here in the YouTube uh, visuals, he's setting up anti-crime centers and clearly states the purpose is to prevent crimes like the ones that took his parents from him. Yep, One of that's the few right. references to the Wayne murders. Right, right, and right. And this isn't just a 1966 thing. We see in this comic, he goes undercover just to donate cash to the poor in a shelter. He funds a house for the homeless in the name of Harvey Dent. He goes as far as to build an entire apartment complex for the homeless with their expenses paid. Damn. He basically gives housing to the homeless. Now, when we think about poverty, specifically poor orphans are the ones in danger of getting recruited by gangs. And Bruce is no stranger to orphans uh, himself, of course. Right, you, know, right, you could right. say that him uh, taking in orphans who become Robin is kind of his own way of, of philanthropy, but others will, you know, sort of suggest, well, that's just because he needs soldiers and shit. And that's a whole other issue mm-hmm. uh, that people might have. But let's say outside of the Robins, how much does he do for orphans? Well, as early as the 1940s, uh, we see here in during Christmas time, Bruce says that he wants to ensure that the toys that he donated get to the orphanage that he wanted. Uh, this other comic here says that he funds nationwide work to support orphans. Uh, he supports a daycare project in this comic panel. In this Brave and the Bold tie-in comic, he donates double the total of what other people raise for a charity fundraiser for orphans. And uh, let's not forget that at the end of The Dark Knight Rises, probably my favorite part of the entire ending of The Dark Knight Rises, is that he donates his own fucking house to be an mm-hmm. orphanage. <laughs> Did we forget about this? Yep. Did everyone just think about Christian Bale drinking espresso in Rome or whatever? Like, <laughs> he donates that entire mansion to become the Martha and Thomas Wayne home for children to make up for the fact that he did not realize that the orphanage was not getting his funds anymore earlier in the movie. Right. Uh, Bruce himself runs, helps run a program called VIP, the Victims Incorporated Program for Widows and Orphans and Accent Survivors. So this brings up another thing. Bruce does not limit his work to just orphans, to just uh, kids with that personal connection. He also helps women as well. He writes a check to uh, a the widow of a checkmate agent who was killed in the line of duty. He donates to women's centers, uh, helps them open three new shelters and provide legal services to them. Uh, so in terms of the poor, the victimized, the orphanages, he's pretty much been doing that type of stuff. And a previous comment also criticized Bruce for not funding education. But... Let's take a look. How much does Bruce Wayne do in helping education? Well, in the storyline 24-7 in Gotham Knights number 32, Bruce Wayne gives out college tuition like candy, gives out grants to teens to help community development, pays for orphans' education in this one scene where he just literally shows up in the ha- in the uh, in the classroom and tells him he's going to give them that opportunity, uh, funds a boys' club to give them gym and sports equipment, Gives equipment and supplies for a new science and art center. Donates to the Gotham Academy. Sets up a fund for botanical projects for kids. Uh, under the name of Pamela Isley. To help Poison Ivy redeem herself. So that's also another thing where he's using his uh, you know philanthropic efforts to help the villains get redeemed. Mm-hmm. Uh, also in the latest issue of Batman 89 comic. We have that he's providing scholarships to kids in the Burnside District. Uh, mm-hmm. For a free ride to Gotham State University. 
Nice. Uh, and this panel from the uh, the Batman Strikes, which is the tie-in from the Batman animated show, uh, has him open a Wayne Adult Education Center saying, quote, It is my hope that education, opportunity, and positive thinking can help us all eliminate crime and prosper together in the Gotham of tomorrow. <laughs> but that's all invalid because some dude on Reddit doesn't think that he does anything for education. <laughs> It's as if they've, they've never not addressed it. <laughs> too much reading. I can't read all that, Ben. Look at all those tiny words. Look at all it's those too, words. It is a lot of words. I will I will agree with that. <laughs> I was going to say, too, that um, I think it was a couple uh, like images ago, but I was thinking about like, you know, how uh, one of the reasons I always liked Batman so much as a kid was because he was a good guy dressed up as something scary. I was like, oh, he's kind of like masquerading as this like Dracula like creature of the night. But I, I always liked how that was juxtaposed with the fact that he is so compassionate, not only for people that are in his own circumstance, like a, a kid that was orphaned or victims of crime, but also like his own villains that mm-hmm. commit crimes. Like he can, for the most part, other than like Joker, I guess there is some elements the way that they're written he can see uh he can see like the good in just about everybody which i really like that and it's and it's you know in contrast to his other persona his crime fighting persona i guess absolutely and i think funny enough that's not really conveyed in any live action version with the exception of the ending of batman and robin that's right when Clooney just flat oh, yeah. out says i want to help you to freeze yeah stuff. but right People, you know, apparently forgot all about that one because they just discount the whole thing due to rubber nipples and don't actually see that one scene. Uh, yep. And I can understand it, but that doesn't change the fact that that scene does still exist, <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, I didn't... Again, we, we're even mentioning examples I don't even have here. Like, I probably should have included that one in this one, too. Well, that's all right. We can Robin. just talk about it anyways. We'll talk about it for those who aren't list, uh, who aren't looking at it in YouTube. But, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, but yeah, that just goes to show that you're seeing a whole bunch of examples here, and this doesn't even cover everything from comic book history. This is just the stuff that we were able to find mm-hmm. off of, thanks to, uh, we'll mention them later, but uh, a Twitter user called The Bat Family uh, compiled a lot of these. Um, and then, you know, obviously our research assistant, assistant and I found a whole bunch of others that we added in here uh, and put it all together in organizing it. But this is... Pretty much all the stuff that he does to help out uh, the stuff we mentioned er- earlier with poverty, orphans, education. Let's talk about unemployment. Because <laughs> critics might be like, well, he's a billionaire. He must treat his workers badly, <laughs> right? It's fantasy, remember? Yes. <laughs> so remember, Bruce Wayne is a fictional character, everybody. Y- you can write him in many different ways. Yes. <laughs> Well, yeah. according to this Wayne employee on the right of this comic panel, Bruce Wayne is known for paying good wages and benefits, as well as building low-income housing, and gave this character a job himself. Uh, again, let's not forget Batman Forever, where Val Kilmer's Bruce made sure that Fred Stickley's family got full benefits after his death at the hands of Edward Nigma, uh, even though it wasn't actually covered under their policy. Mm-hmm. Uh, He also uses his personal funds to fund Wayne Enterprises insurance to cover stolen property and provide sponsorships for immigrants and gives them jobs at the Wayne Enterprises sponsorships for new citizens. And if it just seems that Bruce Wayne is just throwing money out and isn't really that involved, that's not true either because he plays a direct hand in employing people. We've got another one here where he gives out a job to this woman after finding out she was unemployed, and he buys out the company that was treating their workers unfairly and rehires all the laid-off employees. We have uh, the Alex Ross and Paul Dini uh, team up War on Crime, where he prevents this one area from getting gentrified by buying the property and reopening it so that there are more jobs. Uh, And then one of the examples that sticks out in my mind, I know, Zach, you mentioned uh, the ventriloquist Mm -hmm. working for Wayne, but also in the animated series episode Old Wounds, he literally goes from confronting and beating up a criminal as Batman, Mm -hmm. finding that he has the family, and then later gives him a job at Wayne Security as Bruce (laughs) Wayne, which makes Nightwing see Bruce in a different light. Mm -hmm. But I think one of the best examples is still back to the Batman Strikes um, tie-in comic, in the Batman Strikes number 39, Batman puts on a recording of Bruce Wayne offering jobs to Black Masks men 
in order for them to stop working for Black Mask. <laughs> Instead, <laughs> gives them health insurance and access to the adult <laughs> education center. And at the end, Black Mask is just like, Batman's right there, just hit him, and all of them walk out. <laughs> Let's turn henchmen into Wayne men. I don't know. That's right. <laughs> Something so like that. he is literally <laughs> using his money to stop crime, and it's not just with giving out jobs either, because Bruce Wayne is also involved in funding appeals for any wrongful convictions. Because remember, Bruce Wayne is about justice, not about beating up poor people if you don't understand the character whatsoever. Uh, then this next one says that Bruce offers to fund a task force to reform the justice system and ensure that there are no wrongful convictions give support to gun control organizations so that guns are off the streets. And obviously, let's not forget that in The Dark Knight and other interpretations, Bruce helps fund Harvey Dent's campaign so that he can help clean up the city. Yes, Harvey becomes two-faced, but again, there's no one was able to know that that was going to yeah. happen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's true. On the subject of cleaning up the city, Gotham is often seen as kind of a shithole, and people wonder why Bruce can't just use his money to help, except he does that too. So... <laughs> As we covered in talking about Cataclysm, Aftershock, and No Man's Land, we had that whole series last year. When the quake hit Gotham, Bruce Wayne himself financed 10,000 one-man companies so that any of the ones that were most successful would become major employers and help rebuild Gotham and Gotham's economy. He also helps all the recovery programs, giving unrestricted access to Wayne Tech resources and Wayne Foundation funding. And in this panel, this one dude is just like, yes, but, uh, you know, our profits are uh, suspended for the duration, and Bruce does not give a shit <laughs> about it. Uh, and as we covered in that storyline, Bruce himself even leaves Gotham because he tries to talk the government into using their resources to rebuild the city. The whole reason Gotham is taken over by criminals in No Man's Land is because Bruce was busy trying to save the city as Bruce Wayne mm -hmm. and appeal to the government. <laughs> and this is not just exclusive to this storyline either for anybody thinking like, oh, well, that's just that one thing. He helps rebuild Gotham's neighborhoods in the Court of Owls storyline. He presents this in the very beginning of the whole New 52. He helps rebuild the old Monarch Theater where he and his parents saw the Mark of Zorro. Uh, Monarch Theater, of course, coming that name coming from uh, the Batman 89 movie. Mm -hmm. Helps build a community center, creates redevelopment projects that provide employment through theaters and stores and lower income housing. Donates money to rebuild schools, homes, and infrastructure. Builds, a, Buys a whole city block to set up and finance free enterprise zone. And that doesn't even include cleaning up his own messes. He provides uh, quote-unquote refund checks for property damage that he inflicts as Batman. He pledges, according to Arkham Knight, $300 million to restore the part of Gotham that was turned into Arkham City. Uh, when he fought the Joker in the Man Who Laughs storyline, he rebuilt the entire Gotham viaduct. And uh, he also, in the storyline Night of the Monster Men, pays the entire cost of rebuilding the city. So there's that. And that's just in Gotham. What about the rest of the world? Because some people said, like, you should use his money to help the world, not just Gotham. Well, hmm. let's take a look. Bruce Wayne also builds a city called New Metropolis to provide housing and jobs for an overflowing population, donates to the Royal Gallery in London. Sends money to Ethiopian refugee camps uh, after he's there during the death of the family storyline. Uh, runs the Santa Prisca Relief Fund. Uh, donates equipment and funds to help rebuild Smallville after it's attacked. And donates $100 million to a project for affordable and safe housing for displaced people in Star City. Kind of encroaching in uh, Oliver Queen's territory, but hey, he's using his money wherever he goes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. So... Uh, we're still not done because you might also think, well, okay, so he does donate to stop poverty, help the community, help rebuild property damage, but why doesn't Bruce actually help fund Arkham? Why doesn't he donate resources to mental health to stop these supervillains? He does. In this panel, it says that he donates to help upgrade Arkham Asylum, which I'm sure involves upgrading the security because it, oh, yeah. it'd be nice for him to actually go out on a date on a Saturday <laughs> as opposed to having to stop the Joker. Um, yeah. In the 89 to 91 newspaper strip we talked to uh, talked about last week, Bruce donates a million dollars to it. Uh, and then this also shows that he donates $100,000 to the Adams Psychiatric Clinic, which will probably help those from turning into, you know, certain people into turning into supervillains by providing them affordable mental health uh, health care. So... That covers how Bruce Wayne helps the city. What do you guys think? You think he does enough or... Uh, no, do not enough. More, <laughs> more. He's shouldn't dress up as Batman at all and just do all this okay. stuff. I mean, it's amazing just how much there is. It's like it's 
it's been an almost every incarnation it feels like so yeah it it's really not even starts a recent thing yeah yeah and it really starts to feel like these these haters online are mm-hmm. just really you know I haven't read any of the comics. I guess I, I don't know. Yeah, it's just, hmm. it's just, it's just dumb. So, mm-hmm. I guess if he's, I, this is probably going to go into the next thing, but um, if he's doing all this on the on the financial side and the philanthropic side, mm-hmm. and there's still problems, so he has to address that problem via the bat, right? Yes. Via Batman means so. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, I mean that's and that's just like for some reason Gotham is written to be just corrupt to the core and <laughs> trying to change all the. He, I'm sure he's trying to change with campaign contributions and shit, especially mm-hmm. in Harvey stories. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, to to if they can clean out the the politicians, that'll probably help out a lot as well. But yeah, it's like yeah, it's just this is um quite the case, Ben. Yeah, you're presenting, yep. and that's just for Bruce Wayne. <laughs> We're going to cover Batman okay. for a little bit. Because basic hmm. basic bitches are all saying that he's just an angry dude who throws punches. Batman himself has a history of being a philanthropist. Batman take a look. is? Yes. He with his bat credit card. Yes, yeah, so with his bat credit card. He auctions off <laughs> possessions for charity. Uh, helps this guy recoup the money that was stolen from him. Appears at fundraisers to give jobs to ex-convicts to help rehabilitate them. Uh helps this wealthy man use his money towards charity instead of the corrupt recipient it was originally supposed to go to. Uh, he and Superman team up to create an event by putting their trophies as part of that event uh, in an event to help raise orphans so that everyone shows up there uh, and basically use the Batman and Superman name to appeal to people um, and gives $100,000 to underprivileged kids. And this is a lot of old comics, uh, but it's not specifically just for the old comics because as Andrew said, this is not just certain parts of Batman history. This is throughout all history. So let's take a look at some more modern stuff. Batman literally gives money to this homeless person uh, from the window of the Batmobile, offers <laughs> jobs from Wayne Tech, uh, gets this kid a wheelchair, uh, oh, shit. and uh, gives resources to orphans in this panel uh, that says in the caption, quote, Batman helps people all over Gotham who are in need. Make sure that no one gets in the way of them getting the help that they need. Uh, so... As you can see, all of these kids are gathered around crates and boxes. Uh, it looks like they get a few tablets. It looks like they get a few toys and stuff. And each box, of course, has the mark of the bat on it. I feel like so, then there would be like people thinking, like, where does Batman get all this money from? Yeah, he is risking it with a secret identity. but mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah. That is where we're at. So it's not that Bruce Wayne doesn't use his money to help Gotham. It's that he does, and it doesn't actually stop supervillains, partially because without supervillains, we don't have any Batman stories. But also, let's ask the question, why doesn't it stop supervillains? And we'll get into it after the break. Here at Chat of the Wild, our game club podcast, we have been using our lens of truth to do deep dives on the Legend of Zelda series, in order, covering one to two dungeons each episode. Our show also looks at Zelda-likes, such as Crusader of Senti, Golden Axe Warrior, and the bizarre journey of For the Frog the Bell Tolls. Join us right now as we play Ari and the Secret of Seasons, our first new release since Season 1, or check out our past seasons breaking down nearly 20 action-adventure titles. New episodes drop every Wednesday, here on the Greenlit Podcast Network. Lord have mercy, y'all. Do you like hounds? Do you enjoy pooches? Do you find yourself enjoying time spent with that of canines? Talking about dogs, y'all. As you might have heard, superhero stuff you should know has now teamed up with BarkBox. For every month, you get a box for your special canine. Pooches. Or hounds. That's right. One free extra month if you go to BarkBox.com slash Superhero Stuff Pod. Follow the link and you'll get a free extra month valued at $35 and valid for all multi-length plans. So get the BarkBox for your hound, for your pooch, for your canine. Your doggo will thank you. Welcome back. We're going to go into the second half of our show asking, could Bruce Wayne's money actually prevent the birth of supervillains? So in order to do that, let's go into the villains. Uh, could Bruce Wayne's money, guys, stop Ra's al Ghul? No. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Ra's al Ghul has been alive for longer than the Waynes have had the name Wayne. You know, like, 
he himself is probably even more rich than Bruce Wayne. Yeah. The, Ma- the Waynes were McWayne in Scotland. No one's joining the League of Assassins. shit. Yeah. <laughs> no one's joining the League of Assassins because they need money. They're joining them because they're zealots of his yeah. cause. Yeah. It's, it's an ideology. Thing, right? It's beyond, yeah, they're, um, what do you they call it, radicalized. Yeah, yeah radicalized, yeah, radicalized yeah, by yeah, Ross. Yeah, 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 but it, there's never a point where you're just like, oh, I only joined because I need some money for my kids. Like, nobody's saying that. They're they're all because they're believers in Ra's al Ghul. So, Ra's al Ghul automatically already exists in this world where Bruce Wayne is never Batman and only uses his money. Let's go into the next uh, group. The Court of Owls. Court of Owls has been in Gotham since before Bruce was even born. Um... I don't think money applies here because they employ dead people. <laughs> and they themselves are the rich aristocracy of Gotham, the right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They themselves are the rich aristocracy, uh, the the court themselves. And the Talons are dead people. So the Talons have no incentive for money because they're dead. That's all they do is just work for the Court of Owls. So Bruce Wayne, I mean, Batman can punch the shit out of him. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, break this little yeah. porcelain mask. Yes. <laughs> All right, next one. Uh, the mob. Carmine Falcone. What do you say? Mm, he could pro- if I'm playing devil's advocate here for a second, I mm-hmm. think maybe he could, could, could convert some of the henchmen, but not yeah. all of them. Yeah. Well, I feel like how much, how can throwing money at the judicial system and the police force really change things? Because I know, like, the organized crime is you know i feel like it is allowed to continue because of corruption yeah uh, in both of those areas but i don't really know how throwing money at it would automatically fix things um, exactly exactly yeah plus like he bruce as a private citizen does not have the power to enforce like where that money goes or any of that yeah. kind of stuff like he can donate to the police department but if you're donating to the most corrupt police department in america it's not likely that that's going to suddenly clean things up just with that. Um, but like you said, like I doubt that Carmine Falcone is going to be like, you know what, I'm going to retire and be your lawyer for Wayne Enterprises. No, that's not going to happen. <laughs> you could probably do a few of the henchmen on that will switch over to be a janitor over at uh, Wayne Enterprises, but that's about it. Carmine is still going to be Carmine. His family is still going to be in charge of shit, and he's still going to have the cops in his pocket because that's yeah. how Gotham was like before Bruce even came back. And I, I feel like a lot of the henchmen are still, like, very loyal to those crime families because oh, yeah. it's, like, that's what they know. And it's yeah, just exactly. a totally different scenario than just, like, I need money. I'm going to go work for Penguin or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, next one is Bane. Now, Bane was not even created in Gotham. He was created in prison in Santa Prisca. <laughs> you could argue that Batman's existence is why he even comes to Gotham City, because that's what happens in the comics, but he would still be Bane. Like, Bruce Wayne's money isn't going to go to Santa Prisca in a prison, because nobody really knew that prison existed. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I can't see it. I can't see a way for his money to fix it. (laughs) We've got, then, a venom-induced Bane terrorizing a different city on Earth in a world without Batman. Uh, Next is the Joker. Now, this is interesting because Joker's not typically motivated by money, but in all of his origins, there is one origin that was created due to financial stress, and that's the killing joke, where his character turned to the Red Hood gang to afford money for his pregnant wife. So maybe in this world, if somehow this character was employed by Wayne Enterprises, he would have been fine. I also think... Well, go go ahead, Ben. I'm, I'm saying that's that's if you buy that this was Joker's actual origin, though. Yeah, I also think that in this particular origin, you could argue that Batman's existence led to the Joker being created because, like, you know, he he tries to stop that crime and scares him enough to where he, uh, you know, pre-Joker Red Hood falls into the chemicals and stuff like that. So I was like, well, if he never became Batman, would would that guy just have been shot like the other two guys by the up security of Monarch playing card factory next door? Or like, you know, <laughs> right. <laughs> so he could just be dead if Batman mm-hmm. didn't exist. But yeah, maybe if, maybe if there was some funding put forward to like the housing units he, he lived in, I don't know. There's a possible okay. argument there. There's the killing joke Joker. So far we got the killing joke Joker and some of Falcone's henchmen. 
Right. Yeah. Right. That's about it. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that's assuming that's the Killing Joke origin, because if we go to 89, Jack Napier has been an assassin ever since he killed the Waynes, so yeah. the money ain't gonna do shit for him, because he already loves killing. Same thing with the one from Betas, same thing from the one from all the different versions where Joker has been evil from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, since before Bruce Wayne returned to the city, so if we're dealing with those Jokers, ain't gonna do anything. Uh, let's go into the Penguin. I don't think the Batman Returns Penguin was really in need of much money. Maybe the help from some plastic <laughs> surgery, but he would have needed a lot for him to uh, overcome the mutations. But there is maybe one that could have been helped, and that's the Bronze Age version of the Penguin. This version turned to crime after his mom's death, and their bird shop was shut down. And it's possible that this could have been prevented. If his nose there was is some ridiculous. Man. His nose is... <laughs> his it's nose like Pinocchio. <laughs> If anybody out there is familiar with the uh, Japanese Tengu with the long <laughs> nose, man, it looks just mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. So we'll put him in the category. So, so far, Killing Joke Joker, Bronze Age Penguin, some of Falcone's men. Yeah. Uh, what about Catwoman? Yeah. I think, oh. I think so. You She's could, a thief. She could be saved, you think, by Wayne's money? <sighs> well, Possibility. Think about, like, I guess in her origin in Batman Year One, like, that was such a shitty part of Gotham that she, I feel like, is a byproduct of her environment, even though she is, you know, becoming her own kind of costumed character and overcoming her environment. It's still like, I feel like the place that she was in and the way that she grew up, you can't, ha- I guess you can't go back and change like how she was raised, but that environment in particular that she was in, uh, I guess that could have been helped by Bruce Wayne's money. That's year one, though. Was he even... He, like, just got back to Gotham. I don't know if he really could have yeah, helped things in. He's, when he's back, she's already working on the streets of the East End. That's true. So at best, he could have helped her out so that she wouldn't end up becoming Catwoman. But well, let's also keep in mind that if he does prevent the birth of Catwoman, he's his, Bruce Wayne's money is basically helping to prevent the least threatening of the villains of this group so far. <laughs> That's true. I feel like she... good sometimes, even. <laughs> yeah. I feel like in Betas, especially, she's getting close to being like a... Not not like Poison Ivy being like an eco-terrorist, but mm-hmm. she definitely is an animal lover, and I feel like that's kind of like what where her soft spot is. I feel like Bruce Wayne could appeal to that as far as maybe having her... I don't know what kind of job at any, what Wayne Enterprises you could have, but... They've been doing work around the world to prevent the assistant. Yeah, to prevent the slaughter of felines or something like that. (laughs) Slaughter of felines. Yes. (laughs) I mean, if we look at like better at Wayne than at Trek. That's right. What's coming to my mind right now is like if we look at the places, the governments on Earth that seemingly. <laughs> Hopefully, I don't step on too many toes here. But like the the governments on Earth that seemingly use their money the best, and like people have the highest happy happiness indexes and stuff, like the Nordic countries, mm-hmm. generally they have a really good uh, government so- uh, safety net, uh, that kind of thing. Um, I'm still you could still assume that these countries, these places on Earth, even there, people do not people. Some people still experience trauma. Yeah. Right. Yes. There's tra- mm-hmm. traumatic events are going to happen, and in, mm-hmm. in the world Just, of comics, this traumatic event would cause them to start wearing a cat suit or whatever. You know what I mean? It's like, the uh, it IKEA furniture. Logic. Yeah, IKEA. <laughs> that, that's traumatic. Trying to put those together, you know. That's true. That's true. That's <laughs> that's where they come from. Those Nordic countries. I shall become the couch. <laughs> <laughs> I shall become my 20th calyx shelf. <laughs> <laughs> so Love those calyxes. I think we're in agreement, so maybe Catwoman could have maybe. been invented. Okay. So Catwoman's uh, uh, maybe. Maybe, yeah, maybe. It, it, but then, as I said, like it's still it's still a world where Ra's al Ghul, the Court of Owls, Carmine Falcone, mm-hmm. and Bane all exist. So congratulations. You helped the most least threatening of the group so far. Right, yeah. right, right. Next one. Uh, the Riddler. Hell no. I don't yeah. think so either. When is Dude. he ever down on his luck financially? He had a job at Wayne Enterprises and still exactly. fucked it up. I've got that up here. Yeah. I think I think he's the type that would come out even in the most 
socialist utopia imaginable like he's just his ego would yeah it, it it's would, his personality it would, yeah it mm-hmm. wouldn't matter none of that would matter yeah yeah and specifically the jim carrey version obviously he doesn't have an issue of unemployment because he literally works for bruce wayne his turn to evil has nothing to do with money none of the origins of the riddler have anything to do with money it's portrayed that right. he turns evil because bruce turns him down and you could say okay well if he bruce wasn't batman he wouldn't have seen the bat signal he wouldn't have turned edward down but then let's be honest in a world where Bruce isn't Batman, is Bruce still going to approve the box that's sucking out people's yeah, brain? Yeah, he was still questioning it, even when like, yeah. Nick, and when Jim Carrey was mm-hmm. talking to him. So, nah, I don't think so. I feel like he would. He recognized that Edward was kind of unhinged yeah. already. I mean, there's only so much you can do for somebody whenever their own egotis- egotistical personality and antisocial behavior leads for the leads them to like a a bad path anyways exactly yeah so the riddler is still created in this let's look at harvey dent this is going to be interesting mm. what do you guys think about this i think so you think it could have helped well i think it could help now if he just strap him down and go ahead and <laughs> get his face fucking fixed like there's gotta <laughs> bruce wayne's got enough money to pay some plastic surgeon to fix him well, that's what he's done, though. We saw that in Second Chance and Vitas. We saw that in The Dark Knight Returns. Well, they should have better... would they, still be fucked, though, right? Even they should have had better spaces. security in Second Chance because, like... <laughs> uh, yeah, just... It's got to be... I don't know. I feel like even beforehand, you know, maybe it's the same argument we had about the mob where, mm-hmm. like, Harvey Dent is trying to fight the mob and it's, you know, money can't really fix that, but... Mm-hmm. What do you, I mean, did we even talk about Bruce Wayne uh, putting money towards, like, I don't know, psychological therapy for uh, citizens of Gotham or something? I mean, because Harvey was in therapy to begin with. Uh, I don't know how far you want to go back. Bruce's money can't can't reach farther, far enough back to stop his father from being abusive to him exactly. with a coin. Exactly. So, yeah, At I think, most, yeah, yeah. Uh, and most would be helping mental health services and stuff. But Harvey, you can't force people to go to therapy. You can't force yeah. people into mental health stuff. So Harvey would still have to volunteer to go to a therapist to solve the problems and to go to a good therapist, no matter how much they're being paid, they still need to have the skills in order to help his issues on this. Yeah. I would say, Har- I mean, I don't know. Andrew, what do you think before I get into my stuff? Okay, let's talk about the... So the the acid on the face, right? Yeah. Let's let's break it down even further. Mm-hmm. Is there any way Bruce Wayne with his money could have stopped that acid? <laughs> nope. P- um, probably no, not. Because Maroney's already a mobster by the time that he's back as bat uh, back from training mm-hmm. stuff. Let's say if Bruce was already he, this guy, probably still would have been a mobster if Bruce never went and left to get training. So right. Maroney's still there. I would say Harvey is there because he's a DA and is able to, thanks to Batman's help, get Maroney into the courtroom. So technically Batman does play a small role in that happening, but it's a role that he, you know, is necessary. It's one that Harvey wanted. He wanted Maroney on the on the stand. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right, so that's a no. <laughs> and, then, well, and then so go ahead Andrew po- post transformation yeah he's become two face mm-hmm. honestly the way I see it but especially in, with two face in particular he's mm-hmm. they were friends before mm-hmm. and I think ba- he has to approach him as Batman in a sense just because that is his compassion he's not trying to kill two face he's trying right. to fucking reform him any way he can he's you know like correct me if i'm wrong ben but that's generally the case right yeah he's trying mm-hmm. to reform him as batman yeah he might punch him a little bit as henchman but at the end of the day he's trying to stop this monster and mm-hmm. not yeah. not via killing him so exactly. i think even batman is compassionate in this case especially so mm-hmm. uh yeah a post-transformation i don't know if the money would help either really yeah, I was yeah. thinking about in the Rupert Thorne origin, would money have helped? Because it seems like there's a chemical factory that Rupert Thorne mm-hmm. is in that mm-hmm. maybe they could have had some 
it could have been up to code. Maybe they need to do some investigating there. But I guess then it just comes down to Rupert Thorne being corrupt, you know, working within like corruption. So maybe that's why he has access to that mm. building already or it's something that his money bought. Yeah. I don't think there's really a way around it. I mean, for money, did this help? Yeah. I, here's what's interesting, because I thought about this a lot but when I was preparing this. I think Two-Face is created because Bruce tries to use his money to help Gotham. Bruce uses his money to fund Harvey Dent into becoming the district attorney. If Dent mm-hmm. doesn't become the district attorney, doesn't get Bruce Wayne's help in that, he is not in that courtroom to get the acid in the face. Damn, that's he's good. Not getting, he's not hmm. getting blackmailed by Rupert Thorne in Batman the Animated Series. He's not getting captured by the Joker and put in a warehouse in the Dark Knight. He's just, you know, a crusading lawyer but doesn't have any power. They're so not really Bruce getting Wayne causes two, th- two, a two face. <laughs> he's he's the victim of way. yeah yeah he's the victim of Bruce's like good intentions. Damn, yeah. dude, that's so, uh, that's really good. That's good. If anything, Bruce Two Face is definitely still created in a world where Bruce puts his money and only uses his money to fight crime and gone. Yeah, he is still absolutely created in this one. He's almost guaranteed to be created in this version. Because the role that he plays in Harvey Dent's origin is not really as Batman so much as as Bruce Wayne in funding him for DA, if we're going in that interpretation where he does that. So, kind of uh, points <laughs> points against the other side there. Yeah, actually, yeah, that's 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 cool, though. I like yeah. that. It's yeah. a little bit different, because they always say that Joker is created because Batman starts showing up, even in Batman Begins, right? They kind of mm-hmm. they hinted that at the end. Mm-hmm. Uh, so this is Bruce Wayne instead of instead of Batman. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, next one is Mister Freeze. Definitely. Okay, go into that, Zach. Well, I guess I I don't know. I just jumped at the chance to say yes. Uh, <laughs> maybe the fair what did uh, Ferris Boyle owned? Was he the did Goth he Corp. own Goth Corp or was he just like the boss there? I think he owned it. Okay, so that's already a corrupt, well, not corrupt so much as just like a shitty billionaire character, like I guess everyone is assuming Bruce Wayne mm-hmm. should be in reality, but um, I don't know. I guess it, with the creation of Mr. Freeze himself, could you say that like Bruce has any any say over what goes on at someone else's company? Uh, but maybe like, maybe if Bruce had went ahead and started something at Wayne Corp where there was a competing uh, cryogenics division. They could have gotten Victor Freeze to come over there and then maybe started his work before his wife got sick. But I feel like his... Access to the precogs for Minority Report in order to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I know that, that would prevent they... Mr. Freeze okay. from existing. <laughs> maybe maybe uh, definitely money could help him after the fact that he has mm-hmm. turned into Mr. Freeze, especially in a storyline where Nora is still alive. Like if you think about Arkham, uh, Arkham city, I mean, Batman knows like where Nora is at the end of that. I mean, she is, she's alive. So you feel like maybe a little bit of money could be put towards that to go ahead and get that shit fixed. So Mr. Freeze is not a, not a bad guy anymore. Mm -hmm. So possibility. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Let's think about it. So Batman, let's say in, in the storyline, they they exchange a few fights here. They, they they meet. He's like, who the fuck is this freeze guy? Let's assume they haven't met before in the story. Then he mm-hmm. finds eventually finds out about Nora, then does the detective work more on Nora. At that point, can Bruce Wayne use his money to save Nora, thus canceling out Mr. Freeze? Is there a way to do that? Well, he did in Sub-Zero with the whole transplant thing, mm-hmm. so... It's it's a it's definitely something that's happened, but it's also like I think it depends on the interpretation. It depends on what causes him to be Mister Freeze. You know, like if right. this, if this is the one where he needs diamonds to fuel the suit, then yeah, that's uh, we we're not. <laughs> I like Nora too much. B B Taz changed the game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so uh, yeah, let's forget about the diamonds. So that would be interesting. Batman then maybe Bruce Wayne. Maybe not heels, but she's definitely on the path to recovery. Mm-hmm. But then Mr. Freeze finds in himself that he would be this way anyway. You know, that'd be mm-hmm. kind of a cool character yeah, arc. That could be interesting. And like but, And he's yeah. just he was just using Nora as some fucking scapegoat. 
you know, like that would be depressing. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes, he loves Nora, but he's still going to be this guy too. Or like the, the dark gold. side, the dark side, the cold side has taken over too much since he's mm-hmm. become Mister Freeze. Well, you could really, like that. you could say that's that is the exact storyline in the New Adventures of Batman when Nora so, is cured after Sub Zero, but because of Mister Freeze's condition, his body deteriorated. And it could only be stopped right when it got to his neck. So he's like this <laughs> this freak frozen head on a spider leg body in a robot suit. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, he then he's just like fucking insane, like in one screw in everybody's life. So, yeah, money yeah. can't fix that. So no, no, it could have. The only way this could have been prevented really is if Bruce Wayne bought out Goth Corp and helped out Mr. Freeze's, like, Victor Freeze's project. That's the only way I can think of if we're going with the Heart of Ice origin mm-hmm. of things. So maybe, but he would have to know that Ferris Boyle was pulling this shit. Again, this is like, the only way this can happen is, as I said, like he has access to the precogs from Minority Report and knows how all these supervillains are going to be created. <laughs> and, and so he's, you know, like, again, this is a world where he's only using his money to help fight crime, which means he does not have any detective skills. Morgan he Freeman walks really on know. him talking to the precogs, and he says, this is wrong. He's wrong. <laughs> 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 so Mr. Freeze is kind of like, he maybe, but it seems like most of the stuff that Batman could help out with is stuff that happens afterwards yeah. rather than stuff that happened beforehand or led to his creation. All right, let's go on to the next character, the other villain from Batman and Robin, Poison Ivy. Oh, man. Well, she was already part of, in Batman and Robin. She was part of, uh, what, a Wayne division that was working in South America, right? She was mm-hmm. technically a Wayne Enterprises employee. I guess they just weren't keeping very good tabs on that shit. I mean, <laughs> with Dr. Woodrow and stuff like that. So, <laughs> Whoops. I feel like maybe his money could be used towards finding a cure for her condition, depending on what storyline you're reading, how how freakish she is or how much power she has of her plants. But certainly like he already has a lot of money going towards like, you know, making things more eco-friendly and like that one, excuse me, like that one thing we saw, he was already like, you know, uh, donating money in her name. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I don't know. I feel like she's probably got a little something in here in her already where she might continue to be bad, depending on what iteration you're reading. Mm hmm. Andrew, what do you think? I mean, she's just another, you know, part of the Groves Gallery with really with mental issues, right? With mm-hmm. so, you know, I don't know. Yeah, if he threw money at like mental health of Gotham, I don't know. But there's the thing is the way these comics are written too, because you need a villain for one, but also mm-hmm. there's just gonna be somebody with worse mental conditions than others and then those become the villain right so it's right. just yeah i just uh, i don't think it's going to help too much probably i right. feel like the got the the poison ivy and the harley quinn series on hbo max or whatever i feel like she would be fine she seems a lot more chill for the most oh, part yeah. i feel like if yeah, she yeah. was offered a job for Wayne Enterprises that dealt with like the, you know, stopping like, you know, I guess the tearing down of rainforest or, Mm -hmm. or waste and stuff like that. I feel like she would probably be on board for it. She would definitely be somewhat reformed. I guess you just have to make sure she stayed under control and didn't kill somebody because they stepped on like a jujube on the ground or something like that. (laughs) But, you know, like I, I do feel like, there are versions of her there that could be reformed pretty easily. Not the over the top, like Uma Thurman or anything like that, but yeah, some versions of her, she definitely is not just totally unrepentant and can't be reasoned with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If like, if so, if the money couldn't have stopped her from being created, Mm -hmm. then uh, especially the way it's written, generally you would need, you just need a superhero to fight a supervillain, man. Well, you know? yeah, I mean that's. <laughs> you just need these two forces that's the to go in. All of these, yeah, you know, right. Know. So it's just I don't know. And then you, the hero is supposed to be compassionate, so she's got mental issues. Does she have? Does do, 
I don't know a whole lot about poison ivy other than like the surface level shit. So does the fucking like the the plant chemicals they do affect her brain? Like it does make her mental condition worse? I think it depends on the interpretation. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, for the most part, I would say poison ivy, just like a lot of these villains, is not really that financially motivated. Even though mm-hmm. this picture that we're showing on YouTube shows otherwise, because yeah. she's a pile of money. But <laughs> that, of that, that does <laughs> seem kind of shallow there, doesn't it? I feel like she wouldn't give a shit. Yeah, she cares about the world and environment and the plants and stuff. She doesn't actually care about like money in itself. She's an eco terrorist gone crazy, right? Like, gone much. green. Yeah. I gone feel super, like super green. Yeah. Has she ever teamed up with Ra's al Ghul? I feel like they would kind of get she along. Should. She should. They both have some of the same goals. I'm surprised there aren't like a ton of team ups with them, but there just mm. haven't been. That's yeah. weird. So yeah, I don't uh, feel like she's yeah. that mentally unbalanced. To be honest, I feel like she's an Arkham most of the time because she's like a special case where she has, uh, you know, uh, the powers powers basically like not supernatural abilities. But yeah, she she is not just a normal human. I feel like for the most part, she is basically using her newfound abilities to take out like take kind of a personal uh vendetta against like humanity or men and things like that mm-hmm. depending on which one you're reading because i think she said she was abused by dr woodrow and uh some of the comics who experimented on her but for the most part I, I don't remember her being like insane beforehand but she could have been like abused beforehand so maybe she's just like you know what i've got power now mm-hmm. uh why shouldn't i just be like a femme fatale and like have whatever i want do whatever i want so I feel like that's kind of that case where, like, somebody that's powerless all of a sudden has power, and maybe they weren't, they're easily corrupted by it in some way, or they Mm -hmm. kind of take that, that, you know, villainous path. So, yeah, I don't Mm -hmm. think she's really that insane. I think she's just, you know, using what she's got now, you know, taking advantage Mm -hmm. of it. Yeah, I think so, too. And all of that, all of what you said can't be solved with money no just it just can't be <laughs> again i think a lot of this stems from just an overly simplistic view of not just gotham but just the world in general and thinking that uh since money can help a lot it means it can also solve all the world's problems and yeah it's not true so uh i think this next character is even more emblematic of that and that's the scarecrow uh-huh. would money from the waynes help Jonathan Crane not become the Scarecrow. I would say not at all, considering that his whole thing is about power and his childhood trauma and has nothing to do with him needing any money. Maybe if Thomas and Martha Wayne had started an anti-bullying campaign (laughs) much sooner. uh, But in some cases, Jonathan Crane didn't even go to school in Gotham City. It just depends on what iteration you are, you're reading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel like he has... A lot of issues, and it's just like money's not going to fix it before or after. Um, unfortunately, I mean, there's some versions of the animated series tie-in comics where you do see that he has a passion for teaching. I can think of like two stories in particular where he, one of them where they he's given a job teaching again uh, mm-hmm. under like strict supervision, and another one where he breaks out of Arkham and takes on a new identity and actually becomes a teacher again somewhere else and only becomes a scarecrow after he finds out that this one of the younger students, a young lady in his class, this is like high school or college again or something, but she's been abused by uh, one of the jock characters. So he only becomes a scarecrow to like basically torment him and punish him for his actions. So there are some, I feel like slightly more benevolent versions of the scarecrow and ones where his, his empathy can be appealed to, but for the most part, he just needs a lot of therapy, I think. Yeah, I would say so. And he's not getting it in Arkham, apparently. <laughs> yeah, so let's let's talk about that. So he, let's say Bruce Wayne, Wayne Foundation puts money in all the mental therapy. They even notice it when he was a kid. Well, he didn't even grow up in Gotham, but, or, right? Let's That's say right. he did. Yeah, let's, let's say he did. Let's say he did. Yeah. Let's mm-hmm. say he did, grows up, gives all the money, but then you still kind of have to, you're writing a villain, right? You have to fucking like all that just didn't help him. But you still <laughs> you would need you would need Batman to maybe punch him a couple times. They haven't they have a fight, they duke it out, and then he mm-hmm. puts him in Arkham 
again, just to still try to rehabilitate him, but he's still got to be put away because he's probably killed several people at this point. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, yeah, it's just... The sad thing is, with all this, is like... In the in the real world, money really will not help some people, yeah. right? And that's the villains that you write. Uh, it's just it's just a sad fact. Money won't money won't bring you happiness. They say, but it also won't solve every problem. It won't solve every problem no. either, you know. So mm-hmm. I mean, it'll help. It'll definitely help a lot of people. But we're talking. Let's say it. Let's say it helps ninety nine percent of Gotham. You would mm-hmm. still. You'd still have that one percent or less than one percent of people that become supervillains, you know? <laughs> right. Right? Like even if it yeah. becomes a Nordic utopia, if Gotham starts to become a socialist democracy, then like it's still you'd still have these extreme personalities pop up, mm-hmm. I think, in the world of comics. So it's it's just yeah. yeah. I wonder a world where Rosal Ghoul, the Court of Owls, and Falcone Falcone's mob, Maroni's mob, they all still exist in this. So yeah. unlikely right. that we're not going to get any supervillains in this world. And this is us talking about like a world where hypothetically if Batman didn't exist but Bruce Wayne could use his money to help these situations, right? Mm-hmm. So I wonder if a lot of the supervillains would have still ended up like creating costumed identities. Something oh, about yeah, that's thing. yeah, something about that makes me wonder a lot of the theories are that, you know, Batman has inspired a lot of the bad guys maybe to come out of the woodwork and up their game and they're going to be like a costumed mm-hmm. character. But even in Batman Begins, like Jonathan Crane was doing the whole Scarecrow thing before he knew there was a Batman. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I just wonder if some of the more outlandish characters would exist in the same way without a Batman around, but... Yeah, obviously, like that, all all that was going to happen in Batman Begins, regardless of Batman's existence or not. Yeah, yeah, I would say so too. Uh, yeah, in regards to the in regards to the costume stuff, like Joker, you could say probably would not have existed without Batman, but it's not you know it's not necessarily Batman's fault on that. Yeah, um, and then when it comes to Scarecrow, absolutely, like in Batman yeah. Begins, he already exists, and even if you don't take the Batman Begins interpretation. He's still a guy who was bullied throughout his entire childhood and has this whole thing about him at the faculty and ends up firing a gun in the classroom. Like, yeah. he still is already somebody who has issues yes. beforehand. And sure, we can talk all about, like, this utopia where we have the best mental health resources, but it still hinges on the principle that this guy would have said, oh, yes, I, Jonathan Crane, who who has all these issues, I am willing to go in and seek help for this. Yeah, because this is a band that already... He he doesn't have like the the same kind of ego in the way that the Riddler does, but mm-hmm. he does consider himself to be in, incredibly intelligent. That's his like mm-hmm. his one thing that he can rely on because he wasn't uh, physically intimidating, you know, uh, throughout his whole life. But he is very smart, and I feel like he would be he would find therapy to be like an insult to him. Like, oh, I'm, oh, I'm yeah. smart enough; I don't need somebody else well, telling me how I feel. Also- yeah. He's in that field. Yeah. So yeah, just, exactly. Why do I need you to tell me what I already know? I know myself better than you. My therapy is this. Yeah, the version in uh in Batman Begins, yeah, where he's already working at Arkham. That's mm-hmm. like, what do you do for somebody like that? Yeah, exactly. So Scarecrow's a no. Then in no. terms of whether or not Wayne Money will help him. Uh Hugo Strange. Nope. Like it, Hugo Strange is never motivated by money. He's only you could say if Batman didn't exist, Strange wouldn't be obsessed with him, which is true. But he might find a new obsession. He would find a new obsession. Like it, it, you got to keep in mind, like with Bat, without Batman's existence, they would just have something else. They would have some other form of what they're already doing because they're already capable of of murder, manipulation, and and stealing and mass, you know, terrorist type actions, mm-hmm. and all this type of stuff. Uh, so if Batman's not around, that doesn't mean that they would just not do it. If there's a ton of money and Gotham is a utopia, that doesn't mean that these guys still wouldn't exist. So Hugo Strange is a no. Yeah, I was um, thinking about that episode of uh, B-Taz. Um, yep. What is it? Tri- the Trial, where the like Batman's on trial in Arkham, and it's like the his uh, defendant, the lawyer that doesn't like him, is like, you know, whether Batman existed or not, even if he didn't exist... 
you know, you guys would, the gimmicks might be different, but you probably all be out there doing the same thing, bringing misery to the people of Gotham. So, I mean, I do I think about with. that a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I agree with, I, I think the whole thing about like, well, Batman's also a villain because he created these villains. I'm like, how much did he really create these villains though? Yeah. I don't think he actually does literally create them. He doesn't tell, he doesn't tell them to start killing people. He doesn't say to Harvey, like, you know what you should do? You should, like, start doing all these two-themed tone, two themed crimes. Yeah, here's the suit. <laughs> here's the split yeah, suit the of this one. He doesn't make them villains and stuff. They were already capable of that. That's just an excuse. And it creates some interesting, you know, thematic stuff, sure. Mm-hmm. But to actually take that seriously is a gross exaggeration of what's actually going on in these stories. Mm-hmm. All right, let's go into Deadshot. Now, Deadshot's commonly seen as a mercenary for hire and kind of a hitman. Some would say if he had more money, he wouldn't turn to crime. Uh, But that's because they forget that Deadshot is a rich guy. (laughs) That's true. I forgot about that, too. Little did you... (laughs) Lest we forget. (laughs) ...started out as another billionaire who was masquerading as the villainous Deadshot, meant to be a parallel to Bruce Wayne. So Deadshot would already exist. If Batman wasn't around, he would still be Deadshot. Yep. Next next villain. Next! Uh, Black Mask. Black hmm. Mask is a rich CEO. Roman, yeah, Sionis yeah. Industries, yeah. Sionis right. becomes Black Mask in the comics because Bruce Wayne saw that his company was failing and bought out his company, and Sionis felt that that was an insult to him and became Black Mask. So you could argue, just like with Harvey Dent, Black Mask is born because Bruce Wayne bought his company to try to save it and save people's jobs. Right. Black Mask is this because Bruce Wayne tried to help Gotham. Yeah. It's, like, so, it's like the underlying idea is like, there's always going to be, sadly, there's always some form of evil that will pop mm-hmm. up. Right? Or some, some evil's catalyst, a, yeah. Evil's yeah. a loaded term in the real world, but in the world comics, and mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, it's just always going to pop up. Yeah. No mm-hmm. matter what you do. So yeah. that's, it, it's just, so, yeah, Bruce Wayne Batman's trying to stop at, at all angles as much as he can with, with mm-hmm. his dual life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then the last one is Hush, which... We also know he's another rich guy from the rich families of Gotham, so unlikely. Yeah. Him, and he hated Bruce before Bruce's parents were even killed. So Hush is not going to be uh, stopped by, you know, Wayne throwing money out at Gotham because no. he already hated him from the beginning. Yeah. So let's take a look at our uh, total. In this world where Bruce Wayne uses his money, does not become Batman, but only uses his money to fight crime, he could have prevented Catwoman from existing, maybe. He could have possibly prevented the Killing Joke j- version of the Joker from existing, which is kind of a big thing. I would yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, a few thugs from the mob bosses and the Bronze Age version of the Penguin. But we're still left in a world with a Gotham that already has mob bosses, the Court of Owls, the League of Assassins with Ra's al Ghul, before Bruce Wayne even returns home from Gotham or even becomes a grown man. Plus, we have a strong possibility that Harvey Dent either is going to get hit with the acid anyway because Bruce is funding him his fundraiser to help clean up Gotham, or Bruce doesn't help fund Harvey Dent's campaign, in which case Harvey Dent never becomes DA and Boss Moroni never gets to the stand anyway, which means that we now still have a mobster on the loose. So either way, it's still a bad thing. Um, Mm -hmm. We have Floyd Lawton still becomes Deadshot because he's still a rich dude uh, in this world. Robin Siona still becomes Black Mask. Tommy Elliott already hates Bruce and wants to destroy his life as Hush. So we already have all of these villains in existence in this world so no bruce wayne's money does not prevent much maybe the joker in that specific version maybe biggest thing and that's a maybe too yeah i feel like there's so many of them that are mentally unhinged i feel like even Mm -hmm. even if harvey dent did become two-faced in that specific way i feel Mm -hmm. like something else would have happened it's kind of like it it's i mean it is this is fiction but it's almost like the fate of some of these characters that it's just always going to end in tragedy where I feel like he's got all these underlying mental issues. There is like something else is going to happen and eventually it'll come to the surface. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now that we've gone through this whole thing, any closing thoughts from you guys in terms of Bruce Wayne's money and how far does it go and how much does it actually help Gotham? Well, I think all those arguments are invalid. I will say again, if you're going <laughs> to bitch about that, you need to bitch about Iron Man too. He's got just as much yep. money and he's still mm-hmm. flying around in his armored suit. I know you can probably say, well, you know, 
he's with the Avengers fighting fucking aliens and everything like that. Like, Which is with the Justice League fighting fucking aliens. Touche. So there, <laughs> you gotta have somebody to fight aliens or, you know, like, if Iron Man just stopped being Iron Man, I guess, like, Warmonger and stuff would still become Warmonger. But if he wasn't such a mm-hmm. dick, you know, maybe what's his name wouldn't have become whiplash but oh that's neither here nor there that's iron man <laughs> but yeah it, it doesn't matter like how much money bruce wayne throws at these different situations which as ben showed earlier in the episode he does a lot and i think i i like that he does it i like that that's part of the story that's part of the character's compassion but there's so many of these examples where money doesn't solve these problems alone and it's like that you need a Batman basically to to take on like these basically higher level criminals, these supervillains. And uh, yeah, just you would not have a comic book without it. I feel like that's just, you know, that'd be silly. Yep. OK, yeah, uh, this has been a great episode, Ben. And uh, let's see here. Um I just think that people – all right, so in the real world right now, in America especially, America's got the most billionaires, most amount of billionaires out of, out of any country. And also, I'm pretty sure that America has the biggest disparity between CEO and top paid oh, yeah. or, re, or, or average employee salary too. Um, Japan's got the lowest actually, so I think they're better than the Nordic countries in that in that aspect. But So we are just have a lot of like – political upheaval kind of thing happening in America, especially <laughs> during the last administration. But I think it's going to, it's going to keep going. Oh yeah. Keep going no matter what. And, um, you know, it's just billionaires are definitely have the, they're the least popular than they've ever been. I think like, I think that, in some sense, America is kind of getting wise to, like, yes, we have the American dream, but we're not all going to be a billionaire at the same time. I mean, come on. This is just a fucking fake character. <laughs> some some people's dreams happy. have ruined other people's. Yeah. 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 So yeah. It, so this seeps into a character that is known to be rich. And so you get these comments online. And mm-hmm. so it's, I can understand the phenomenon existing, like I see why people started to make these comments, even though I don't agree with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's that. And the other thing is like, again, the Grant Morrison thing for me, I don't really need to know who the fuck pumps Batmobile's tires. I don't need uh, every little thing explained. And I don't need a whole comic book of just Batman's fine or Bruce Wayne's financial situation. These are power fantasies. They wear bat suits. There's aliens in them. You know, there's a guy with fucking question marks on his fucking head. You know, like, it's just fucking, like, to me, just get over it, man. We're, yes, like I said, like we talked about in the Godzilla episode, and like I've said in other, like a million other episodes, it is my bread and butter that something kind of originally wasn't that deep became kind of deep. And you can still, it could kind of, the comics can still say something. These stories, these myths, they can say mm-hmm. something about our lives and they can they can influence us and they can influence children, yes. But, like, and they can be positive for sure and negative maybe for some people. But mm-hmm. uh, we just don't need, we don't, we don't, we just don't, I don't know. It's kind of fine the way it is. We don't need to go into like as a, an accounting adventure of Bruce Wayne. You know, mm-hmm. it's he can still say something positive and still be mm-hmm. Batman punching criminals. I guess you know what I mean. Yeah, you kind of have mm-hmm. to write it to where the criminal really deserved it. You know, or like uh, not even punch. Maybe just use the batarang to tie him up or whatever. Like it's really like last minute thing. Um, like mm-hmm. even in, even in the Matt Reeves trailer, the the criminal punches first, right? He tries to go for. He took a swing. He to go for. He took a swing. Yes, a tr- retaliation is nuts in that trailer, but still, uh, he's trying to. <laughs> well, they might address his over retaliation maybe in the in the movie. I don't know, but mm-hmm. but yeah, 
it just feels like a people are not reading the comics as we as you more than an, you've explained more than enough here, Ben. Like you've presented the case really well, and b people just wanting something from a fantasy comic that's just not really part of the genre, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, and it doesn't really have a place in that story. Yeah. yeah. And I don't think, yeah, kids play fight. I used to play fight all the time. I loved being X Men or Batman or whatever on the on the playground. But we, it was all play fighting. It wasn't, you know what I mean. So, if it's too violent, I just don't think. At least for me, maybe some kids, but it, in my in my experience, it didn't lead to actual violence, man. Mm. So, um, yeah, I as we've more than established in this episode, I think we're all in agreement here that mm. this commentary is just kind of stupid. Gotham, <laughs> Gotham needs both, Ben, to answer yeah, this question. Not yeah. because he has to be now, because he chooses to be, to be. Yes. both <laughs> Bruce and Batman forever. Right. right. <laughs> Should have been. Should have been killed instead been. of Keaton. <laughs> they, they gutted the most important part of that fucking. Uh, he still says movie. that in the movie, though. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, I understand this criticism has been more popular recently due to a frustration in the real world towards class disparities in real life, towards uh, how people are treated who work for those who are rich, those the haves and the haves nots, all that type of stuff. This has been growing for several several years, even longer than, you know, way before this podcast, longer than a lot of these movies that we've been talking about, a lot, lot longer than some of these comics we've talked about. And I understand that. But to me, that outrage is leading to a lack of critical thinking and analysis on what's actually going on here, which is that it's, it's a very simple-minded, oh, I don't like rich people in real life which leads to all rich people are evil, which leads to Batman is rich, which leads to, therefore, I don't like Batman. Right, yeah. And it completely ignores the actual actions, and it also shows a lack of being able to absorb fiction. <laughs> when it's like, you buy that this guy trains in 100 martial arts, has this amazing car, <laughs> has his cave underneath, and goes to bat suit every night, but you don't buy that a rich guy can use money to help the city? At the same time, dude, it's just so yeah. stupid. I think, yeah, yeah, just let it go, man. Just let let us have our comics. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's it just fantasy. Ridiculous. I'm like, maybe spend that energy towards the actual people you're outraged towards, and not a fictional character who is supposed to be an example of what you know what those people who you're mad at. He's an example of who they should be, who they're supposed to be. Yeah, he has the compassion. He has the resources, and he's using them in order to help people and. Sure, you can be outraged about people in real life who aren't doing that enough to help people, but target it towards them. Don't target towards a character who is supposed to be the opposite of that, who's supposed to be what you're looking for, who you want uh, to be reality. Mm -hmm. Also, as we covered, it fails to see that money itself doesn't solve every issue in the world, which again seems very simple-minded to just say like his money is automatically going to prevent everything from happening in Gotham City. Batman exists not necessarily due to any class disparities or economic reasons. He exists because there's evil in the world, just straight out. Most yeah. of the supervillains we've talked about, they have no interest in money. As we even talked about in the fucking Dark Knight movies. You know, Alfred's like, you know, some people just want to watch the world burn. Has no interest in anything financial. They have These are not desperate poor people who want to feed their families. These are people with serious issues who have decided that unlike Bruce Wayne, who uses his trauma and turns it into something positive, they take their trauma and use it as an excuse, and they use that excuse to hurt other people Mm -hmm. and bring them down to their level. So Batman exists in order to protect other people from those people who do that. And so I think overall, I think we're all in agreement. Gotham needs both Bruce Wayne and Batman, and for the people who insist on this argument that Bruce Wayne should quit being Batman and just use his money to help Gotham, Maybe read some actual Batman stories instead of spending your time trying to make yourself feel smart with your hot takes on Twitter. That is superhero stuff you should know. All right. Before we get into fan comments, I decided to uh, thank a few people. I should thank a few people. I didn't decide. I should. Uh, So thank you to the Bat family on Twitter for the images from the Twitter thread. A lot of the stuff you guys saw in the YouTube versions, a lot of the examples I cited uh, were gathered by the Bat family on Twitter. And big thanks to our research assistant, Dan, who was the hero on this one for gathering all of them for this presentation. We're on slide 123 right now (laughs) on all this stuff. And it's, it's mostly thanks to you, Dan. So thank you very much for that. 
uh, let's go into the fan comments. So this first one comes from SM4 Carnage, I hope, uh, <laughs> on the, the myth of Tim Burton's Batman 3 video that we did. Uh, I said, hey, let us know <laughs> any other rumors to debunk. <laughs> What are you laughing at? It's just, he's trying to look. He's squ- uh, it's so small to me. I'm yeah. like trying to see it myself. We, we Zach, try, guys. This for us. If you're yeah. on, if you're on your phone watching this, there's no way unless you got that fucking <laughs> super galaxy or whatever the fuck. I'm, I'm just going to listen to Ben then. We tried. We tried, though. We tried. We, we tried with our screen caps, but unfortunately, <laughs> in this format. It's okay. <laughs> with the Google Slides, it's not always the best in terms of seeing them, but. Uh, SM4 Carnage, I hope, said more rumors to debunk. The Batman Triumphant script that's floating around online that is clearly just fan fiction due to it not lining up with the details we've heard. First off, thank you, SM4 Carnage. I hope we've been getting a lot of requests saying, like, hey, there's, here's the actual script, and me saying, no, it's not the actual script for it because it doesn't line up with the details. So thank you for catching on to that. And uh, that uh, may actually be the next one that I'm working on, the myth mm. of Joel Schumacher's Batman 5. I like it. There was a lot of comments on that one, Ben. I saw that were like, thank you for debunking this <laughs> bullshit out there. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get thanked for this episode, too. I think we will. Well, let's see, yeah. Um, other, a lot of people also thanked us for Zach's coverage on the Kenner action figures. Mm-hmm. So yeah. Pete D said, the quote, the plastic ring in the cape always broke on mine, and everyone I knew had the 1989 Batman figure, and everyone on everyone the string would come undone and get lost in his stomach forever. <laughs> oh, yep. I had the painted head version with the paint worn off. <laughs> that is that is a shame. Uh, I'm sorry about that, Pete. <laughs> Mine's yeah. still going well, but I think I just uh, it's because I decided not to keep pulling it whenever I saw it. It's that toy biz uh, manufacturing there. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> they weren't that good. <laughs> yep. Nope. And this one's from Jim saying, even as a kid, I was like, that's a snazzy turtleneck on Bruce. I always figured that's where <laughs> what he wore around the Batcave or just as the underlayer of his costume. So that's <laughs> yeah. Reference to the design on the Kenner action figure uh, with the shirt that I wore in that first episode. I, I don't so. think that designer knew how, what kind of uh, influence that was going to have on nope. No. Like, we all, we all thought, that's a cool turtleneck, you know? <laughs> I hate the turtlenecks my parents give me, but this one's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, that is pretty much it when it comes to the fan comments. Over to you, Andrew, with the uh, shout-outs. Okay, so thank you for those comments, and thank you to our Patreon supporters. I want to thank Shasta, Leom O, Super Emperor Man, Douglas P, Dan D, Aaron Willett, Nick Noir. Jesse E, Jeffrey R, Scott V, Asgers Webb, Jeremy H, Alex of the What Mean Podcast, Ian Justice, Jared P, Paul C, and Jamie H. We're getting some more people on here. The fire hey. Yes. <laughs> and we want to thank our other supporters, Spark Again, SDCC Productions, Robert Schumann, uh, Cookie Noms, Matt Herring, Elijah B, Shamrock Bowles, Ian H, Walter the Wobot, John Wells, Rye Guy, Jackson Putnam, and Tway in. Please, if you want to be listed, get on that $1 tier on patreon.com slash superhero stuff pod. And then uh, get the, on the $5 tier to get listed on that list, but also get the whole other show. And that's every Friday. Cancel anytime. And we do deeper dives and commentaries and all kinds of shit like that. And then our $10 tier, you can join us live for a monthly meetup. And uh, the fire is rising on that one as well. So check it out. Again, mm-hmm. cancel anytime. Any Patreon shit, you can cancel anytime. I mean, there's no fucking commitment with it. So, yeah, check it out there. And then uh, superhousepod.redbubble.com and superherostuffpod.threadless.com. Get your Ben Men and Deed Wizard mugs. And I did try to add, I think you might be part of one of them, uh, Zach, but the one, of, the other one uh, canceled us out, right? Because I thought it was too close to the Joker. Oh, yeah. So we'll have to revise that, I think. Yeah, so we're, I think we made some headway on one on one of them, but the other one we got canceled out. So, uh, yeah, uh, we're, we're still working on that. So Someday. <laughs> Artwork by Wolfie Cruz. <laughs> Maybe Actually, in 2021. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, Stefan Santa Cruz. Uh, find him on there and then uh, please send us some audio to superhousepodcast at gmail.com send us a clip there that'd be awesome you, you can be in the show and then uh, please animate our sketches just hashtag it somewhere in the video please and then 
I'm Thunderwolf Drew on Instagram and Twitter. I'm Thunderwolf Lives on YouTube. Check out my other shit on there. Thunderwolfdrew.com has my portfolio of all my other shit, uh, except for amanorecon.com. That's A-M-A-N-O-R-E-C-O-N.com. It is an R-rated original idea, not a fan film. Think the think Stranger Things tone-wise. Think Stranger Things. And X-Files have a baby, but that baby is R-rated and wears a Power Rangers-like suit. So, um, uh, that's that's it tonally. I don't want to give too much away just yet. We're still making headway with that. Mm-hmm. And um, that is going to be an Indiegogo project. The the uh, poster is by Zach Octavius right here. Mm-hmm. Excellent poster. As you can see, there's aliens in it. There's the X-Files uh, thing there. And also in the poster, uh, fucking um, laser swords. Yeah. So, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, there we go. Uh, going to be an Indiegogo at some point. Looking like next year at this point, but we're going to have a pitch video before then. Mm-hmm. So uh, still en route. But yeah, I'm working on that still quite a bit. So anyway, that's it. Ben? Big thanks to Comic Capital on Instagram as well as the Everything Entertainment Club on Clubhouse. You can follow us on Twitter at Superhouse Pod, but everywhere else we are Superhero Stuff Pod. Over on Instagram, Superhero Stuff Pod. TikTok, Superhero Stuff Pod. And Vero, Superhero Stuff Pod. You can check out my website at benwanwriter.com. My YouTube channel is in the description below. And you can also check out Early Bird at earlyebird.com. That's earl-e-bird.com. We are revamping the art, as I've talked about, with a new edition. But for those who can see the visual on YouTube, you can check out some of the characters that we've got here on it. It's kind of a nice uh, kids, also kind of a throwback to Batman 66 in terms of in terms of tone. Very Do- much inspired by that. Dr. Chimpson is uh, my favorite still. <laughs> <laughs> it, makes me, it makes me happy every time I see him. him. His little drill yes. there. <laughs> I imagine him talking like uh, Beppo. From the from the sketches yep. ever since that. Ever since <laughs> <laughs> well, it doesn't murder people. This is a kids' comic. Sometimes we need murder. <laughs> that drill is it's supposed to be a drill, but it's making it sound like it's a gun. <laughs> so, uh, on Instagram, I'm at Ben Juan Ryder. My cat's Instagram. My son is Alfie Pennyworth at Alfie Pennyworth Cat. And if you have a cat yourself, then you can get Whiskerbox using our own code, our own uh, link, I should say. Uh, the only cat box for the crazy cat lady and gent where you can give a special uh, little box for your feline friend each month. And if you don't have a cat, that's okay. Because as you probably heard during the break, we are affiliates with BarkBox where you can use our link as well and get the first month off free valued at $35 for your special uh, doggo. So anyway, you can check <laughs> us out at superhero stuff. I mean, superhero stuff pod.com slash shop where you can check out all that good shit along with our Amazon links, eBay affiliates, all that type of stuff, so that you can add more to your collection and help us out a bit, too. Over to Zach, I believe. Well, if you'd like to see more of my artwork, since you maybe saw the thumbnail and liked it and it made you click, you can go to ZacharyJacksonBrownArt.com. You can also follow me on Instagram, on YouTube, and on TikTok. It's all Zachary Jackson Brown Art. And as you'll notice, I pretty much just love drawing uh, horror movie characters or Batman characters, sometimes Spider-Man. But I I do flesh out every now and then, but those are my favorites, so they tend to get drawn a lot. I notice horror is like your thing, your main thing after Batman probably, right? Yeah, most of my money comes from uh, t-shirt designs, and it's all uh, horror movie related. So, I mean, that's that's my bread and butter. I'm a big horror movie fan, so uh, Mm -hmm. yeah, that's me. That's cool. Awesome. Nice, bro. All right. Well, we want you to do us a favor. I want you to tell all your friends about us. What are you? Superhero Stuff You Should Know is part of the Greenlit Podcast Network.